Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. It's approaching 11.30 a.m. Okay, so uh, just waiting for my preview screen. It should be uh, there in a moment. There it is. I'll just mute. Okay, there's this 15% uh, voucher code, King's Crusher, if you want to be a premium member. So premium members can make challenges to any streamer. Ideally, if you turn up, say, 30 minutes before, if it was, say, Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, or other grandmasters, then you're on the challenge list, and we can just pick off the challenges later. So, um, okay, let's go to the challenge screen now. I hope audio and visual is okay. Uh, and um, it's on the challenge screen. Challenges, first challenge today. Olaf. Okay, I'll go with E4, I think. I might start quietly with um, King's Engine attack system. I think it's a good little system. Um, King's Engine attack. Okay, let's see. Does he actually want to give up this light square bishop? Yes. I might want to put... Uh, let's go with G3 for a moment. Oh, I'm not sure I like the knight being uh, lost. Okay, he hasn't taken the knight. Intriguing. Um, oh, this is getting very intriguing. I think just taking, taking bishop f4 and e5. This whole diagonal could be a liability, couldn't it? For a8 in particular. I'm trying to liberate this bishop. On G2. That looks a little bit nasty because well, maybe it isn't Knight BD7. Well, I can take there and I'm still on the rook here. So that's going to be winning an exchange. If I just did Queen takes H5 here. I don't know if there's anything stronger. Look for a stronger move, as they say. I think, I don't know, it looks pretty convincing. Alright, yeah, okay, thanks for the game, Olaf. That's um, uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Don Williams. Okay, let's play E4. And again, I, okay, I think I'll, no, actually, I think I'll go smith Mora Gambit here, a bit of variety. I kind of like the smith Mora Gambit. Got to be careful on bishop f4, there's e5 and bishop g4. So if I can arrange where e5 isn't so dangerous... Um, possibly um, rook fd1 first and then if bishop f4 e5 I think I could just take yeah I don't like the mechanism of e5 and bishop g4 in conjunction with you know knight d4 later so try and dissuade e5 so bishop f4 now I've got that pawn pinned if the queen goes to c7, it's a bit of a target. Okay, so bishop f4 here. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay. Yeah, that's annoying. And I'll cover D4 up and stop Bishop G4 now. Okay. Uh, Bishop E6. Maybe I take like G5 or Queen C4, or maybe I keep the grip going um, some other way. But what would happen on knight g5? I'm going to test this. Knight g5 looks as though it's annoying for e6. Isn't queen c4 annoying if knight d8? There's no rook c8 then. Um, d5 I've got under control. Yeah, I'm just testing this. Um, okay, this is trying to win a piece. Uh, with bishop d4 and hitting the knight. Okay, that's interesting. Could I ignore it? Queen c4, there's rook c8. Queen f1 for a moment, or queen d2. Maybe queen d2. In fact, I might be introducing knight d5 here, hitting the queen for knight e7. There's no king f7 there. Knight d5 might be a clear and imminent threat after queen d2. Counter threat. Knight d5. Okay, so knight d5 here, I, I think is interesting. Hitting the queen. Queen d8. Well, on queen d8, okay, there isn't knight e6 because this knight's actually holding e6. Um, oh. Okay, that's interesting. Can I take on. What about b4 here? Hold on a sec. b4. I'm not really sure now. Queen a6. It's all getting a bit strange. Bishop d4. Is that ever any good? For knight e6. Yeah, bishop d4 ed. I've got two pieces hanging there. Not sure this is that clever. How do I avoid two pieces hanging? Maybe I don't take on d4. No, wait, wait, wait. Bishop d4 ed. There's bishop e3 at least. I I think if ed knight e6. If if e5 takes d4, pardon me. Right here, uh, bishop e3 runs into d4. Okay, so what about bishop b2? Okay, I'm still holding that knight. Oh, he's got queen f2 coming. On bishop g5, there's queen f2. Okay, that's not that pleasant. Oh, that's actually winning a piece. Oh, my word. I thought I wasn't on the knight. No, it's not qu okay. Not quite. All right, there's rook d2 here. Okay, hang on. No, I'm 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 okay. <laughs> rook d2, rook d2. I'm happy to have rook d2 there protecting the bishop. So am I on h5? Am I on h5 knight here? Yeah. Go back to base over here. Right. 
Front and Bishop A3 potentially. Oh, there's Queen C3. Um, it's not that good, is it? Rook C2 first. There's E4. Maybe there's Rook C4 there. E4, Rook C4. Is that too dangerous for me? D3. I mean, the pawns are getting fragmented. That's the problem. D3. I, I could take D tanks, Rook, E1. I think the pawns are getting fragmented. Let's just hold that there for a moment. There's rook b7 for rook g7 here as well. If I get a moment, if I get a move, rook b7. All right, thanks. Yeah, that was getting really tactical. Wow, I think I'll, I wasn't sure what was going on there. Because both fun. Okay. Okay, let's smith more and gambit this. So, mm, what would Esmond do here? So, Mark Esmond did um, Mayhem in the Mora, this amazing book, uh, which I reviewed the online course at. Uh, I had a peek inside at Chessball recently, and um, I think he did mention H3, actually, as part of this, Moroxy Binds. He might have mentioned H3. Uh, actually, I'm not sure he put the bishop, he recommends the bishop going to B2. He might just put it on uh, E3. Okay, h3 and bishop e3 makes sense. If you play h3 to stop knight g4, then bishop e3 might make more sense. And actually, there's sort of dark square weaknesses here with a6. So maybe it is more sensible there. In fact, can I do this? As though <clears throat> I'm up to something on b6. <clears throat> Maybe knight b6. A4, a5. Is that sort of cramping effect? Or a3, b4. Well, in terms of <coughs> discouraging b5, <coughs> blockade. Ah, oh, okay. I'm covering d5 here, I thought, with the knight. Now, okay, isn't a b4 here? Looks as though that knight's in trouble. Um, yeah, I don't know where the knight's going. Uh, knight d5, knight takes d5. Uh, hard to see to suggest what black does. Okay, there is that. Okay. Actually, win an exchange with knight e7 and bishop c5 here. 
if queen e7 okay there I just nudge this rook for a moment and point at b7 with bishop e4 okay my pieces look uh, centralized Uh, I shouldn't worry about the exchange of queens, I believe. I'll take this off, simplify. Okay, I think I can just take that. Hold on to it. Simplify. Probably, I, I didn't need to. Okay, pawn can go to a7 here, tying down this rock. Maybe I didn't need to simplify like that. I was resigned. Okay, thanks. Um, it's my fan. Okay, um, Denov. I click accept. Okay, Denov. So bishop a7 and d6. I'll stop for the moment. Um, bishop g5. I don't like the idea of bishop g5 particularly. This looks so tempting. I'm going to do this. I'd like to have a queen on h4. I think there's dangerous pressure there. So immediately threatening queen g3. If queen f3, knight d4, I think this is dangerous. Oh, queen and queen h2 threatened. Mate threat. Okay, so well, bishop f2 is dangerous or queen g3. Um, both. If queen f3, there's knight h3. Check. Uh, I think I want to play knight. Okay, thanks, Dunov. Yeah, I think it was too dangerous uh, to allow that. Um, I mean, we could have a quick check. Um, well, the computer for um, I thought why well, it's winning, but how? I think it's changing its mind a bit. Why well, it's only slightly better apparently with Bishop H three. Okay, Bishop H three is not the sort of move I'd uh, be too worried. It's changing it to equal now anyway. Or okay, it's making up its mind. Maybe there's a way out. Just okay. Bishop H three is interesting. I thought it would be interesting anyway as a as a try. Talk Medita. Hi. Okay. Um
So King's Engine style attack. Okay, I've got a sort of binds on the king side. So G4 and Knight G3. Yeah, knight h7 for bishop g5. C3 and, um, all right, maybe I can just take that now and bishop h6. I think I want to. Do I want to take on d4 or c3? Uh, c3 maybe. And try and strengthen the dark squares here. I believe I could. Well, maybe knight f5. Get my king off this uh, firing line. Now bishop g5. Oh, there's knight h3 though. Oh well. Maybe king g2 there is, is okay. For rook h1, just to try and share this h file. Also, I think there's knight e7 for bishop f6 actually. I think knight e7 for bishop f6. That gives me queen g5 as well. Queen g5 here looks good. Okay, all right, thanks for the game, Tormund Dita. Ah, uh, Friedel. Will I be fried by Friedel today? Um, actually, let's just click again. Hmm, fearsome. I plays the London system. I've got my anti London system ready, I think. So, which is c5, trying to exploit this b2 neglect fundamentally. I don't mind the double pawns. I think there's a famous Capulanka game where. Alright, so here, bishop f5, I think makes sense, or e6 here now, to keep the pawn chain intact. So, we got a sort of, like last week, a French defence start to the game. I'll put much of here like last week. And um have to reroute some pieces for a sort of French defence style position with Queenside counterplay. So knight b six and b four and maybe a four. F5, I think I take at the moment. Um, all right, okay, that's interesting. If I offer that pawn just to get some peace activity with tempo, all right, so can I take that for a moment? I just want to get this bishop back in the blockading. Roll. Bishop f8 for queen g7. Oh, 
can I put my bishop on e8? Hold on a sec. Let's try and get my king a bit safer. Maybe king c8, king b7. Just try and connect rooks. Well, that's with tempo. Is he on this rook? With queen g7? No, I thought he might go on the rook. Okay, I'm putting my king in a sort of awkward. Okay, that's a bit asking for trouble, but. Stop bishop f4. We'll try and discourage it at least. And can I have bishop g6 here? Bishop d3. Rook G three is that good? Yeah. <clears throat> Counter attack on G file. We check as knight F four. I'll do it anyway. Maybe try and crumble this pawn chain over here. I think taking a rook a1 looks. Oh, or just rook a1 actually. I've got to hold f5, I guess. Is a rook a1? Just take on B one for a moment. C three. That's gonna be C two. All right. Thanks for the game, Friedel. Okay. Um. A three minute game. Manacourt. Mat Matanok. Matokol. Okay. Uh, um, okay, one elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants. Ah. Uh, Okay, is that another London system? No. If I try the cheeky E5 for E4. I suspect there was better with Bishop G5 uh, just then. Um. 
Actually, that was silly. That's Bishop F2. I should really try and castle. Yeah, I should try and castle. The pawn chain bit. Knight d4 looks like hitting f3 and uh, c2. Okay, protect this bishop to renew, renew the knight takes c2. Right, try and get into F four then instead. <clears throat> so I, I took and I'm going to simplify. Try and avoid being back row mated if I can. I'll try and make some air for the king. I'll take some pawns off. I think this pawn's quinning. <sighs> Trying to avoid the stalemates, stalemate possibility. Um, okay, thanks. That's all. Okay, on to the next. Time to move. Time to move. Okay, let's see. One elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants. Seven elephants, eight elephants, nine elephants, ten elephants. Okay, another time. Cobra. Try a king's engine attack, I think. Hi, Cobra. Uh, now, against knight c6, I don't know, I don't want to indulge. Too much knight c6 fury, so just king's engine attack. And if I took uh huh. Can I get this um, light square bishop? Maybe with something soon. Okay, knight e4 for the moment. 
maybe g4 for mm, it's not quite mm, bishop bishop e6 uh, g4 is a bit weakening bishop e6 knight okay no 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 f2 is a bit vulnerable as well I can't get too adventurous around here uh, can I possibly c4 might be a good idea here as if to say the e4 square is all I'm content with at the moment which is pretty good but just to have an un no disturb sign just c4 to the suede d5 c4 maybe um, knight h4 Um, I'm losing f2 the way I've played it. He could take and take an f2. Let's try and try and moderate this a bit. Not to be so double edged. Uh, bishop e3. So holding f2. Can I play for b4? Rook b1 and b4. Okay, now I I appreciate the uh, nine squares. I, f I feel I I should be able to at some point. If he did take it, I mean that evicts the d4 knight. Um, Trying to undermine this pawn chain with a5. Want to keep solid g4 like weakens dark squares and stuff. A5 might leave some sort of well dissolve the queen side potentially. Okay, I didn't mind that. I thought my knight's quite good against the bishop here. Um, combine that opening up the queen side. An invasive rook on b6, say we'll be hitting d6 later. And h6, also queen h5 later. If the rook was on the sixth rank, in fact, there's rook, there's rook b7 here because of um, knight g5. But that's a way of losing three pieces for a queen, which might not be entirely clever. Um, so for the moment, I think rook b6. This idea of maybe Queen H five. And that does give knight g five potentially. Rook B seven might actually be threatened. Queen seven knight g five. Bishop takes. Without losing the knight, it's two pieces for the queen. Rook B seven. There's rook g5 there now. And still too many pieces for the queen. I guess g4 doesn't do anything. A waiting move here. It seems as though this is tense because I can't move my rook because of e3. Rook b7 is not that convincing after taking knight g5. There's rook g5 anyway. Uh, on knight f6, it's again three pieces for the queen. So what about a waiting move just for a moment? A waiting move. Um, load d5. Okay, it's pinned to g6. Uh, I'm thinking a waiting move rook e2. Which might give me rook b2 for rook b7. If knight e3 there, and then there might be knight takes g5. If rook takes, then there's queen takes f7. Okay, so yeah, I think I'll go with this here for inviting knight e3 for rook b7. 
because that would skewer the queen to the rook. So knight e3, rook b7, rook takes. Well, actually, the point is. Well, there's always knight f6 for bishop b7 after. Um, uh, I don't know now. Am I losing too many bits? It's possible I've just lost too many bits. I'm being stupid here, aren't I? Yeah, I think it was a stupid transaction. The only thing I've got going from this, well, now the, yeah, knight g5 for bishop b7. Um, I guess as long as his pieces don't coordinate too much, we'll keep the knight on e4. That's another way. Uh, uh, okay, okay, uh, I don't know. There's bishop e4 on rook g3. On knight g3, um, maybe queen f2. Trying to play for... Uh, He's got e4 if he wanted that. For bishop e5. I'll try and hold some light squares. Oh, and now there's bishop e4 though, the way he's played it. I might be back in business after that move in particular. It's getting a bit tricky. Okay, thanks, Cobra. Yeah, it was getting a bit tricky. Uh, Mr. Pibles, um, e four. Smith Mora Gambit. I think e5 and try and get a knight to e4 looks good in this particular configuration. If I just get a knight to e4 or c4. Hmm. 
I can't wait. Wait, wait, wait. So knight d6 looks mildly dangerous. Knight d6 coming up. And there's queen f7 here. And bishop g5. Oh, queen e8. Oh, I just missed queen e8. I missed the main one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh my pants. Mm. Um. Or well, if I just take. Uh, Queen G5 ninety-seven. I feel rather take her. Isn't Queen F is that mate? Queen F seven, try not miss too many mates in one in one game. Get mocked on YouTube for that. <laughs> Queen Queen F seven. Is checkmate, yeah, okay, good. Okay. My mate in one skills. <laughs> Shane, finally. Thanks. Okay, Goggin, Paul. Hi, Goggin. One elephant, two elephants, three elephants. Okay, we've got French defense. Oh, I didn't mean to play d4. Oh, okay. Oh, we got something weird anyway. So knight c3, I've got a sort of, I think it's um, more space, nice to have more space. Uh, sort of Benoni-ish. Check Benoni-ish. A4 for knight d2. It looks as though here um, uh, f4 looks tempting, even though the controversy of such a move is usually the e5 square. But in this particular configuration, how does black perch something that easily on e5? Um, Right, so if I play F4 here, Queen F7, Queen F7, Okay, so what's happening here? Bishop c4, bishop c4, ef, bishop f4. Let's imagine knight e5. Okay. Well, in this case, d6 is a danger, isn't it, for black? This liberation of the pawn, d6. I might have spotted that. Um, So I'm on the bishop now. Okay, I'll take that. I have five. Uh, 
Um, okay, Queen G4, Bishop F4. Uh, okay, yeah, Bishop F4 anyway. Oh, there might be Queen G4 if I want to go for the King here. Uh, after, if, the, if the knight moves, like Queen G4 could be a handy move here. Queen G4. Pinning the knight to G7. Uh, okay, Queen here. If I played, um, actually, I think I can play Bishop B, Bishop B five here, and maybe even Bishop C six. Try and win this exchange. Okay, maybe not. Put the bishop back. I'm going for e5. Oh, e5. Um okay. Prevent this knight or D six D six D seven or ninety seven maybe it's ninety seven here. Huh? E five E six coming up for E seven looks pretty good. E6 but E7. Okay, E7. Alright, thanks for the game, go again. Uh, I put Pinnacle on. Okay. One elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants, eight elephants, nine elephants, ten elephants. Okay, another time. Ah. Uh, Dungeon, dungeon.
Mm. Looks very good for white so far. Very, very well played so far. This looks very good. Unfortunately for me. Okay. H6, King, H7. Okay, I'll, maybe I was expecting casting queenside. H6, King, H7. But I'm on green tea today. I've, I've, I've been checking out videos on the benefits of green tea. I don't know if you can see this. Instead of the usual coffee, it's just an experiment today. Because um, apparently green tea's got a lot of... Uh, amazing stuff i don't know if any of you drink green tea uh any of you in chat drink green tea uh but anyway yeah i'm just experimenting it like the effect on chess i've not done this experiment before ever i think so uh i don't know um seems okay so far <laughs> i think green tea has a little bit of caffeine um I should really know a bit more about it before talking about it too much. <sighs> okay. So I always thought green tea is a bit too boring, but you can actually just mix it in with other, like, cherry and cinnamon, spiced ginger. So I mixed it in, actually. I got this glass teapot from Amazon. It's actually pretty aesthetic. Because I think if you have a nice glass teapot, just the hassle factor is reduced. I think that's one of the big things for me, the hassle factor. Otherwise, I probably would have drunk tea more. So I'm thinking, I've got this, this very high rated glass transparent um, teapot. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And um, so I've had green tea last night as well. <laughs> green tea today. It's, uh, this is the most green tea I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> in the space of like three days uh, so I got a friend to get this glass teapot as well so I've got this glass teapot at my place at a friend's place and so there's really no excuse not to have green tea right now dark tea oh it's actually got more caffeine than black tea would you get a crash with um, once I played this over the board game and I had far too many cups of coffee and I had a crash during the game and I, I was struggling like Mr. Bean to like keep my eyes open. Uh, <laughs> you can have a crash with coffee during uh, over the board. I've noticed if you have too much of it, it it's um, counterintuitive. Sometimes um, you think you're waking yourself up. I was just falling asleep. Uh, okay, so uh, okay. Thanks for the game. Yeah, weakening. F3 is a bit double edged there. Uh, yeah, so uh, there are some tea drinkers in the chat, are there? <clears throat> okay, uh, so let's. I don't know, maybe King's Game is too dangerous. I, I, I don't want to be humiliated. Maybe, maybe I'll just try and play solidly for a moment. Um, let's see free. This looks like a very staunch uh, start to the game. Uh huh. I'll try and make it into a gambit. I think this is. I think I've seen an article on this recently on Wiki, with this gambit uh, mentioned. And this, I'm, I'm this, uh, I'm, I'm confusing things, um, which is possible. Uh, would he want to take this pawn as well? Because then I might have G3 and King G2. This is getting creative, isn't it? Hmm. G3 and King G2, yes. Creativity has emerged from this opening, funny enough. So first it was a gambit, now it's a double pawn gambit. Uh, okay. The thing is with this approach, I could be weakening f3 quite a bit. I've got the double pawns though controlling d4, so I don't know if bishop g4 is going to be that effective. I'm more looking forward to this h file, or 
if he doesn't take it then knight g5 in this situation about the knight on f6 the hot spot is hotter h7 so i'm wondering king g2 and rook h1 with a bit of compensation i hope at least enough for a blitz game i hope woody castle here I hope this is not going to be proved total nonsense. The Joker. Uh -huh. I hope this is not nonsense. I hope there's some logic here. I'm not just uh, throwing pawns away. you oh, whoops I think I'm screwing up here aren't I yes okay I may be screwing up here big time uh, yeah um what am I doing <laughs> uh, okay um yeah this wasn't on on the plan Please castle, <laughs> please castle. <laughs> then I might have queen h5. Please castle. He's not going to castle, is he? Oh, good, him about it. I'm in for a bad ride here, aren't I? He's not going to castle kingside, is he? This is going to be a bad ride. I'm just hopeful he's going to spend this time every move, and I'll win on time if nothing else at this moment, because this is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna castle queen side. Okay, okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um No. Uh, survival planning. Uh, nasty night. Discover the attack coming. Maybe Queen A4. Uh, well, there's also Queen G4 to think about. It's just the speed. I think you should speed up. <laughs> um, that's giving me a bit of hope. That's the only thing giving me a bit of hope. Um, rook. Okay, this rook's not useful on the H file. Is it? Good. So, how to play a piece down now? <laughs> For not much. I'm controlling E5. There's one little perk of the double pawns. Um, okay, there's let's try and hold this. Oh, work F1. Uh, there's Bishop H4 coming. All right, for B6. Is B6 anything? Um, um, B6.
a bit too slow, otherwise it, there'd be no point me playing on, actually. If it was increment, I think it's just totally gone, this position. Um, is rook, rook g3, king h2? I assume I'm not being mated next move. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay. That's, that's a forgettable game by me. Okay, thanks. Well played, well exploited. Uh, Mokom. <sighs> Let's try a relatively safe Kings in an attack style setup. If I play G, uh, H3 here, just to try and see, would, would this swap of the bishop be? Okay. G3 and bishop G2. Am I having a green T crash right now? I hope not. <laughs> uh, okay. Queen E2, F4 for E5. Right, C3 to stop knight d4. At least I can see that knight d4 might be useful to black. Just suppress that for a moment. F4 and E5. All right, I think E5 looks looks okay. This looks okay. Knight F3 looks okay intuitively to me, at least. D4 uh, for bishop e3, uh, then by reinforcing e5, f5 later becomes more available. Okay, this way, okay, I'll try and take these light squares. King h2 maybe feels okay for knight d2 and um, knight e4, and that feels good for queen h5. Which might feel good for f5 later for bishop h6. So that's the sort of plan which I think is a perk of this wedge in the center. So queen h5, let's reinforce queen side. Uh, okay, trying to avoid this being liberated. Bishop d2 or queen, I don't know, queen h5 looks tempting now. f5, yeah, as mentioned, for bishop h6. Maybe prophylaxis wise, rook f2 for this second rank. I'm suspecting earlier, I was thinking about Nimzovich earlier, thinking prophylaxis. He's using safety context for chess, like locking the car or something before leaving the car. Is prophylaxis in the wider sense he talked about quite a bit. Um, I think it's a pretty useful idea. But rook f2 fails, doesn't it, to queen e1. If, if that's prophylaxis, it's not probably very good prophylaxis. I'm just going to pin. I'm wondering, like, bishop d2 instead is possible here. And then f5. Queen c2 is a concern. Um, would my attack be uh, pretty strong or not? You know, yeah, I'll go for it here. Trading off the d3 probably. Or a rook. Okay, I can take there though. All right, yeah, or rook. Okay, queen h6 for bishop g5.
that rook. Yeah, I think queen h6 for bishop g5. Gives me a big threat of knight f6 right now. If queen c2, knight f6, and after bishop f6. Okay, there's knight f3 check with the pin on this bishop, king h1. Oh, blimey. Wouldn't that be mating with rook b1? Oh, God, I'm about it. Queen c2, what about rook f1? If rook b2, there's rook f2 there. So queen c2, not knight f6, probably, because of bishop f6, bishop f6, knight f3, king h1, rook b1, rook b1, queen b1, bishop f1, queen f1, I'm getting mated. So if I want to stop being mated, it might be an idea to play rook f1 here to stop knight f3. If rook b2, then there's rook f2. Right here, I think. Well, isn't that knight f6 for bishop d5? Or not? Why don't I just play bishop f4 for bishop e5? For bishop e5 for bishop d5. So I'll take this off and then is it getting too dangerous? The knight's too dangerous for knight f3, surely. Okay, this gives me queen g6. Now there is rook g1 here. And this is anything super clever in this position. Queen h6 for knight d2. Let's examine this. He plays queen d2. Oh, there's no bishop d5. He's pinning my bishop. Rook g1. There's queen h5 for queen e5 potentially. Queen h4 to g4, does that actually do anything to improve the position? Okay, I, I assume rook g1 is, is a reasonable move. Queen h5 for queen e5. Well, as long as the knight's holding f2, and this has got rook f1, let's take this pawn with check anyway. Okay. What do I need to do here? Knight d6. It is a nasty pin. Can I try and unpin this bishop? Right, my queen's attack, queen g4. Maybe I need to put the knight back to stop rook f2. There's also queen d7 check. Does that do anything? All right, I think this is simpler. Just I gotta stop knight f2, rook f2. I got to unpin, I think. Oh. King h3 to try and unpin. Okay, he can win material. Maybe rookie one for a moment. Because otherwise, rook g2 and rookie four. Un try and unpin. g4, get this off. Bishop f3 for g4 then. 
Oh, I'll just be mated. Oh, it's Rook HT. I just. <laughs> just on how to make it one. <laughs> yeah, common squares. I, I keep telling my students, look for common squares, because common squares will win you a ton of games, especially on Blitz. I'm, I'm not talking about even calculation. If you just look, even without calculating, at common squares, bishop, rook, common square, you don't even need to calculate. It's often a killer move. Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed that. I just gave common square. There's, there's two things I try and say about improving calculation. I might as well say it here. And actually, one one of one of my students got away with. I didn't. I'm not sure he understood it first time, and I'm not sure you guys understand it either. So I'm going to say it here. I I because I'm quite good on bullet on on sites. So I'm going to say it here. There's two things I think which really improve fast calculation, and you can even do training on them weaknesses of the last move so this is without calculation drill the pawns a2 to a4 then drill the knights but you'll find the queen's the hardest so when you say a4 it's controlling b5 b4 controlling a5 c5 that's strengths then look at weaknesses of the last move and do that with the pawns do that with knights you'll find the queens are actually quite tricky a queen moving from say e7 to d6 weakness of the last move instinctively are the squares no longer covered? So like e4, e3, e2, which means opportunity for the opponent. So that's an intuition, which I call weakness and loss, but it's actually an intuition. And the other intuition is common squares. So it's not even almost calculate. It assists calculation. This You look at where your pieces have the common squares with each other, and it just assists fast calculation. Uh, so this is not even, this is a preliminary to calculation. I'm talking about two preliminaries for calculation. Um, yeah, so I'm sharing this this secret checklist. I'm sharing with my students. I'm sharing it with you two. I, we review you guys publicly. So it's it's just misunderstood when I've been talking about weaknesses last week. I'm not talking about calculation. I'm talking about an intuition on every single move you calculate. And also this common squares is an intuition. And then when you calculate, you can you're fine tuned already, yeah. But yeah, there was a common square there. Um, so okay, I I was lucky there. Yeah, well done. You you had the mate in one there. It was I was I was under pressure. Um, I I hope that's useful. Me talking more abstractly here. There's there's like common squares and there's weakness of the last. But they're both very intuitive, uh, you know, principles, uh, which I think are useful. So the, the common squares is like where the pieces cooperate. Um, so if you can instinctively sort of know that, then you can find opportunities, uh, I think, more easily. And the same with the weakness of the last move. It's, it's an intuitive um, thing I'm talking about here. You know, without, without the grunt work of actually analyzing anything. And yeah, so... Um, I have my pet theories about the game. As you might have noticed. <laughs> As you might have noticed. Okay. Okay. Um, here we go. But the arrows here on this interface are intriguingly misleading for the weakness of the last move theory because it's pointing at that, but really, intuitively, you should be like the arrow should be h3 here, you know, like say there was an opportunity bishop h3. See what I mean? So the intuition of where it's you know neglected, like f3 h3, would be the intuition there. So the new strengths, you know, d4 f4 c3, but the old we the weaknesses actually the, 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 the neglect. So uh, okay. So even even in this Magnus Carlsen game I, I recently covered on the channel, the, the winning move was when a rook went from d5 to from d5 to d7. It kind of neglected f5 
that was like the weakness line, and, and that was the winning move you know turned out to be on f5 and it happens a hell of a lot in blitz chess and it's not even I'm not talking about calculation I'm talking about you build up you can I'm, I might even try and do a yeah some software on it to help that um, you know just the tick where you think just you know maybe with a timer where you think the weaknesses of the last move are. I'm thinking about seriously to yeah do some training software on that <clears throat> but what you see what I noticed also is it starts off very very easy as if this is not a this is not something to train but what I noticed is someone struggling two people now struggling when you try and assess the Queens intuitively the Queens and even even in master games sometimes you know very subtle Queen moves like from e7 going back to d8 happened in one of the classic alkyne games Queen going from e7 to d8 gets a whole load of new strengths you know it's hitting d4 it's hitting a5 uh, so subtle Queen moves I think especially if you think you're already 100% intuition I don't believe so with the Queen moves in particular some people I see visually struggling uh, to to find those differences in squares with the Queens in particular Common Squares T-shirt, yeah, maybe. I've got some new T-shirts. <laughs> These are good ideas, also for T-shirts, aren't they? <laughs> <clears throat> mm. Okay. My T-shirt. Uh, uh, it could be a good idea for T-shirts. Because like, I don't know, yeah, T-shirts as sort of superheroes of the chessboard, virtual superheroes, which help you win games. I think they're positive, aren't they? Like, I, know I definitely won a lot of games with form pawns, and yeah, I think common squares you could win a lot of games. Weakness of the last movie could win a lot of games. They're like the superheroes, especially on when you're playing Blitz. So Ma Maurice Ashley got me into that weakness of the last movie. He's, he called his video. You can look at it on YouTube, The Secret of Chess. And it's, I, I thought, oh, this is like weakness of the last movie, isn't it? I tried to internalize it, and he he basically said a lot of the old classic master games, um, maybe in the old times, it's like we were very egocentric in chess. Well, the masters were in chess, and also in, in programming in programming systems that they thought they could, they could have bad, you know big grand plans intellectually amazing constructions of a, a chess plan or software and the whole thing for that is changed and if even my middle game books started alluding to mini plans grandmasters have not modern grandmasters have like mini plans and I think so the whole that's to the extreme you know weakness of the last move is to the extreme there's no notion of a big grand plan it's just you know very careful observation of of, of a change to feed back into what you're going to do, um, so I, yeah, I think it's very tactical in nature. But in a longer game, I think those things are usually sealed up, except when players enter like time pressure zones before you know move forty in in a long like you know classic game. Those can sort of creep in there. That weakness of the last move, but in blitz, it's all the time. I think it's all the time. In bullets, all the time. You can win with common squares and weaknesses last all the time, virtually. Okay, so can, am I losing a pawn here, um, or can I play? Um, can I? Can I have a? Mm, okay, can I? Can I do this? Um, Queen C seven. I think 
for me I realized something though about weeds and like I can say all these things to you and it's hiding in plain sight that you don't actually no one actually has a clue what I'm talking about it's actually hiding in plain sight because I think there's an assumption I'm talking about calculating and I realize that now and I realize that's not what I meant <laughs> so uh, I, I think I either have to construct tests which actually time the intuition or have to be super super clear what I mean or you know because these things are hiding in plain sight when I say these things um, but I think even for me I think I could do with a training tool so I can look at every Queen movement for example and just know immediately you know the weakness of the last move because the Queen's like the top scorer in, in on the chessboard the most versatile dynamic you know aggressive piece if you can estimate you know that just you know just like that I think that's a cool skill um, am, I, am I getting crushed there or something? We're going into an end game now. All right, uh, what, to, what to do in this ending? This looks as though I've got nothing but time and voyage. Okay, um, it's only uh, three minutes to go. Um, I, I don't know if you're interested in this last three minutes. Should I give you a glimpse of uh, my secret checklist? <laughs> Does anyone want a glimpse of it? Um, I, or okay, no, or maybe I could just say it. I, I could just say it. Basically, I, I have um, a core checklist. I'll, I'll talk about it. My core checklist um, is is to prioritize uh, forcing moves when calculating. So this is just free. Prioritize forcing moves. So I call that check all checks. And um, you might think, well, sometimes you know, but be aware, you know, sometimes forcing moves are bad and help the opponent. Yeah. So you've got to distinguish between um, ones which are distinguished, you know, in a normal game, between good and bad forcing moves. So really here, I mean, this has a lot of traps to it as well, yeah, because because everyone does puzzles. And this grandmaster on YouTube noted that people are, are often helping the opponent with forcing moves. So a big downside there. So you've got to just be aware of the forcing moves and not necessarily use them so that's a huge trap with that bit of advice huge trap to be overly forcing a lot of positions you just want to maintain the tension and actually wear the opponent down by getting them to over calculate so uh, so there's those situations where forcing moves are no good um, but what I call like as I alluded to weaknesses of last move and I'm talking about the intuition for that not 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 the you know build the intuition for that and then the other one is basically like downsides generally um, of the opponent's position and the key thing here the classic one is like loose pieces but and then you have like pins pieces you know awkward pieces in general king safety issues and if you have really long time controls you could look at you know weaknesses on certain color and all that and you get this understand this intuition again again it's a sort of intuition right for the position so then when you calculate anything it's got this basis in uh, in that you're trying to capitalize on some sort of downside of the opponent's position so either the weaknesses of the last move or the weaknesses generally of the opponent's position so anyway I did this main checklist and I found actually there's like hundreds of other skill sets in chess so I made this other half of the document which I call your virtual collaborators and 
that's why it's a massive document now because there's hundreds of other skill sets in chess uh you know like undermining pawn chains and stuff like that but that's just one side of and it, that's how it started anyway this chat list i'm working on at the moment but there's a whole load of other advice generally as well um so anyway uh i hope uh, you enjoyed today uh so um yeah remember this um discount code screen um 15 percent off for the voucher code king's crusher if you want to challenge uh me or other uh streamers um so yeah okay uh thanks um so maybe check out um i might publish that soon uh somewhere uh for next time so it's a big advice document i'm working on but the f the core three bits of advice i've just mentioned okay so see you next week okay thanks very much cheers then